war never changes. The Romans waged war to gather slaves and wealth. Hitler shaped a battered Germany into an economic superpower. But war never changes. In the 21st century, war was still waged over the resources that could be acquired. Only this time, the spoils of war were also its weapons. Petroleum and uranium. For these resources, China would invade Alaska, the US would annex Canada, and the European Commonwealth would dissolve into quarreling, bickering nation states bent on controlling the last remaining resources on Earth. When people are talking about the resource wars, they are referencing three main conflicts. The Euro-Middle Eastern War, the Sino-American War, and finally, but most certainly not least, the Great War. The Euro-Middle Eastern War started as a reaction to the inflation of oil prices, which provoked the European Commonwealth into the attempted annexation of the Middle East. The war started in April 2052 and only ended in 2060 because of the inevitable drying up of the oil fields that the whole war was fought over in the first place. The war acted as a catalyst for the eventual downfall of humanity. For example, the destruction of Tel Aviv via atomic detonation, which starts a global nuclear scare, prompting the creation of the vaults, and further souring foreign relations. Seeing the events that were unfolding in the Middle East, the US decided to shut down their borders and to create the Anchorage front line. As a part of this new initiative, the US demanded rights to post troops in Canada. This eventual erosion of Canadian sovereignty would pave the way to Canada's annexation by the US. By 2072, three years after the establishment of the Anchorage Line, the Canadian people finally had enough of the US's exploitation of their country. Riots and protests culminated in the attempted sabotage of the US's oil infrastructure within Canada, causing a swift retaliation by the US military, leading to the entire annexation of Canada. Over the course of the next five years, lethal force would be actively used to quell freedom fighters and peaceful protesters alike. Forced by the prospect of collapse, the People's Republic of China began the invasion of Alaska. The war would be the final push required to finish many a weapons technology project. These projects range in from FEV, or the Force Evolutionary Virus, to Liberty Prime himself. But probably the most important military development to come out of this war would be power armor. The first suit of power armor to see mass deployment was the T-45, and although only being a stopgap suit of armor would play a crucial role in halting the Chinese advance, and then the later mark of T-51 power armor would help the US to retake Alaska from the occupying Chinese forces. But if you want a more in-depth video about power armor, you can click the icon on the screen. To divert pressure away from the Alaskan front, US High Command authorized the invasion of China. This counter assault would eventually doom the rest of humanity, for at about midnight EST, US forces would begin their final march towards Beijing. Seeing no other alternative, China ordered the submarines stationed just off the coast of the US to unleash their atomic payload. At 0003 EST, Pacific Fleet identified Chinese submarines. At 0337 EST, a squadron of high altitude bombers was sighted off the Bering Strait. At 0913 EST, the launches of four missiles were detected by the United States, sending the country into DEFCOM 2. At 0926 EST, the President ordered a retaliation in accordance with scenario MX-CN91. Finally, at 0942 EST, as the first missiles were launched by the United States, the intended payloads of Pennsylvania and New York hit. The Great War was the shortest war to ever be fought by humanity, lasting just shy of 10 hours, and yet it would be the most impactful out of any war prior or since.